Last April, I visited the Northeast Astronomy Forum, and that was the first time I became aware of the sea star. Uh, Zoo had a nice exhibit, and uh, they were, for all intents and purposes, launching the sea star. Uh, I became intrigued by the promise of what it can do. So when I got home, a couple of days later, I placed my order with High Point Scientific. I had bought many of my telescopes from High Point Scientific, and uh, the good news is they would not charge my credit card until the device shipped. So I waited for it, and I waited for it, and five and a half months later, uh, two weeks ago, uh, the sea star showed up at my door. I uh, videoed, I filmed a video of unboxing the sea star that you can see on my channel. And uh, there were a couple of surprises. For me, the biggest surprise was there were no plastic bags. I expected it to be in a plastic bag. The tripod is very sturdy. The engineering looked outstanding. Uh, the suitcase itself, or the case, I should say, uh, is not that sturdy. I'm going to need to find something better to uh, transport the sea star with. In order to control the sea star, uh, I could use my phone, but I decided to uh, instead get a dedicated Android device. So I got the Lenovo 8-inch tablet. It happened to be on sale. Uh, it is Android, Android 13, actually. And uh, after I uninstalled from it everything that I did not need, it became suitable to use as a uh, sole application being the C-Star app. I downloaded the latest app from the C-Star website. The app that is in the Google Android store is not the latest. So I downloaded the latest directly from their website. I had no problem running the Android once you gave uh, Android permission to access it. And uh, I was pleased with the, the way it worked. First thing it does is it obtains the location. And uh, it did a very good job at that. Literally to within the late, the, to within the nearest minute, arc minute of location. And uh, beyond that, it was a matter of connecting the app to the C star. I was very pleased with the interface and uh, giving permission for local network access and Bluetooth. I click on connect and uh, it connects initially via Bluetooth. And uh, once it connects via Bluetooth, it uh, asks the switch to LAN. It prefers 5G network, obviously. And once we select uh, internet access, then uh, we are connected directly to the C-Star. Next step was to try it. Obviously, turn the anti-do on. It is a built-in uh, anti-do heater. And then uh, our neighbor, our nearest galaxy, Andromeda, had to be the obvious choice. It was uh, due east, and uh, I expected that the sea star will not have any trouble finding it. I learned later on that it is best to orient the sea star towards the north. Otherwise, uh, there could be some unpleasant consequences. I'll show you later how I found it staring at a wall once. Uh, trying to place solve the wall because it did not start uh, facing north. And as it uh, revolved, 
as it slewed, it found itself uh, facing a wall that it tried to resolve. This is in real time, the slewing towards Andromeda. I discovered that uh, C star does not initialize or calibrate, but rather it assumes it is facing north and goes to where it thinks the target is, and only then will it take a screenshot of the sky, plate solve it, and then determine how far off it is from the target, and then go looking for the target. And this is what's happening here. Uh, it slewed uh, towards the south, took a screen capture, and then determined where Andromeda should be, and then went towards Andromeda. And there it is with M31 in the middle. Autofocus. This was a very pleasant surprise as to how well, how sharply the C star autofocuses. Over the years of uh, imaging the heavens, my biggest failings and frustration had always been the focus. I've used everything from Batinov masks to Crayford feather focusers, uh, electronic focusers, you name it. And I always found that uh, focus was my Achilles tendon. Uh, this was pretty good focus. I'm very happy with it. When you click on uh, start, that is another big plus with the, the C star. It takes its own darks immediately. The wheel filter has three filters in it, a dark filter, a light pollution filter, and an infrared filter. And it has to be at one or the other of these three. Uh, it takes darks before every target, before every session, and then automatically subtracts the darks from every frame that it captures. So this is another bonus. I don't have to worry about taking darks. It takes them automatically. It takes about a minute. And once it's done with taking the darks, it will start uh, stacking images. Here we have no choice. It's uh, 80 gain and uh, 10 second frames. The 80 gain will come back to haunt us later, as well as the 10 second frames uh, when we attempt to image planets, because it does not allow us to uh, reduce uh, the exposure time. Uh, there it is stacking, and I'm going to speed up uh, the stacking so that uh, we'll go through the 30 minutes in uh, more like a minute or so. The clock down there that's showing the 10 seconds is uh, a pleasant addition. I like it, actually. And uh, there we go, round and round, <laughs> uh, stacking. A metric that I have used many times with the uh, uh, smart telescopes is the ratio of uh, elapsed clock time to stack time. And uh, in the case of the C star, it's about uh, one and a half. It takes, uh, it took 45 minutes to stack uh, 30 minutes worth of frames. Uh, that, that is good. Uh, in other terms, it takes about five seconds per frame to uh, subtract the darks, correct it, and add it to the stack, and then uh, repeat. So we're looking for 30 minutes here of uh, stack time, which took uh, 40 minutes in real world time, if you will. Next, I went to the moon. And uh, here there was another surprise, a couple of surprises actually. In lunar mode, you click go to moon, it asked me to calibrate the compass by uh, rotating the legs of the tripod. So I went outside and uh, started turning the legs of the tripod around.
And this is when it started showing me that the compass is uh, calibrated. With every turn, it, uh, the green circle increased and started closing. Apparently, you need to calibrate the compass only if you move the telescope by more than 100 miles. I have not tried moving it yet to see whether there is a need for recalibration. I have had to calibrate only once, and uh, it has been uh, it has done a good job since. I assume that calibrating the compass will let it find north from south, but that turned out not to be the case. Uh, in my testing over the past two weeks, I started C star pointing north, and it thought it was pointing south for whatever reason, and uh, it was 180 degrees off with all its targets, trying to uh, make up for it through plate solving. Uh, it does not work well if it's facing the wall and sort of facing east when it's plate solving. So now my uh, uh, workflow, I always start by pointing it to Polaris, and it seems to have no trouble finding Polaris, and then I move from there. Once this is complete, it goes looking for the moon. Here I had another surprise. The moon was still uh, very low on the horizon. It was uh, behind the trees, trying to clear the treetops. And uh, in its attempt to find the moon, it did find the moon in the tree, but it found itself uh, sharply focused on the tree leaves and not on the moon. So I had to wait uh, for it to clear the moon, to clear the trees, to automatically focus on the moon. I was using at the time version 1.8, which did not allow for, auto, for a manual focus. And attempts at autofocus failed repeatedly while the tree leaves were uh, in front of the moon. And then when they cleared, uh, autofocus uh, did a very good job. YouTube will not do justice. Let me see if we can uh, get that uh, to work better. One other feature of uh, C-Star, okay, this is much better. Uh, double clicking on an image allows you to zoom in on it. With the uh, deep sky objects, you can zoom in and out. Uh, with the moon and the sun, uh, there are uh, three levels of zoom. And uh, it does indeed provide a fairly pleasant the rendition of the surface of the moon. One thing worth mentioning is the battery top right corner. I drained about a third of the battery in the first hour and a half, actually just under hour 20 minutes which suggests a battery life of uh, four hours. Uh, give or take. I connected an external battery and then I connected external power and uh, there was no problem with it uh, working. You can take photos or you can record a video and you have a choice between RAW and uh, MPEG-4 uh, for the video. And then uh, the RAW you are limited to 10 minutes uh, given the size, uh, MPEG-4, there is no limit. Uh, that's another interesting feature. Uh, C-Star uh, chooses whether to store the images and uh, the videos on the tablet or on the SD card inside uh, the telescope. Uh, when you're taking uh, images, it will store the JPEGs and uh, the low resolution videos on the tablet directly so you can retrieve them 
And if you're taking raw video uh, and the TIFF files, it will store them uh, on the SD card of the tablet. It provides the ability to adjust gain uh, to a certain extent, so you can make it brighter or darker. Uh, automatic gain seem to work very well for uh, for most of the targets that I uh, I have imaged so far. When I was done with the moon, it was time to see what C star can do with planets. Just a quick reminder, with a two inch aperture, a 50 millimeter aperture, it is not intended for planetary imaging, period. It will do the moon, it will do the sun, and uh, deep sky objects that are uh, uh, in the range of uh, one degree in size, but not much larger given the aperture. And it'll do very well on the smaller targets. So again, this is the moon. This is uh, times four magnification. And uh, taking the images. The Sky Atlas was a very pleasant surprise. It allows uh, surfing the sky and picking objects to click on. Uh, in this case, I surfed my way to Jupiter and uh, tried to go for it. Incidentally, uh, it does not allow entering right ascension and declination coordinates but it does allow a manual surfing across the sky uh, to find the target that you're looking for and there is jupiter auto centering loading image and here's jupiter with the moons and uh, no doubt that we have the right target here and that is one of the uh, shortcomings of the C star not allowing us to manually reduce the exposure enough uh, to get something from Jupiter other than a big blob of light. I tried turning on the light pollution filter on and off to see whether it makes any difference. By turning it on and off, it is essentially switching the infrared filter with the light pollution filter back and forth. And um, even when I went all the way to the darkest possible or to the brightest possible, uh, Jupiter was way too bright for the sea star to, uh, to be useful. Again, it is not intended for planetary imaging. And uh, if a future firmware or software release uh, allows us to control the gain and the exposure, then we'll be able to see a very tiny Jupiter with the cloud bands possibly. Another beautiful feature of the Sea star is uh, you can grab the screen with the cursor and move it around and the telescope will follow accordingly. Uh, that allows uh, fine-tuning if you wish to do so or framing a target that you're going after. Next, we're going to look at uh, the solar. 
it allows you to open the telescope manually so you can put the filter on and when it's installed and ready you click on installed and shooting and out it goes it has failed repeatedly to find the sun it passes through the sun it does not stop and keeps going and then it says failed to find the sun find it manually uh, once you find it manually and you double click on it it gives a very sharp picture uh, these are the sunspots, and considering that the sun is about 30 degrees, sorry, 30 minutes, half a degree, uh, 30 arc minutes, uh, that tells you the field of view of the sea star. In case you have not noticed yet, the sensor on the sea star is oriented vertically. It's in portrait mode as opposed to landscape. Uh, in my opinion, this reduces the effects of a field rotation when you're dealing with targets that are coming from the east and rising into the sky. Uh, I saw very, very little, if any, field rotation when I imaged Andromeda and then Triangulum M33 and the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, M45. Uh, it, if this is the reason, then so be it. But I'm getting used to seeing everything vertically. Uh, in my world, everything used to be horizontal or landscape mode, so it took some getting used to. Uh, but uh, that'll have to do. And these are the clouds. Obviously, there is no imaging here, anything without clouds moving in. Again, you can uh, capture a video of the sun. This is a video of the sun that I captured. And you can stack the images to get a uh, higher quality uh, JPEG or TIFF image that you can process later. And on a very cloudy day, the sea star proved that it can see star through clouds. Uh, this was a solar eclipse, the partial solar eclipse, on a very cloudy afternoon in upstate New York. I was still able to get some semblance of it. If you are to go into station mode on the sea star and connect it to an available network, your home network. In my case, I have uh, sectioned my home network and created a space network to which I connect all my telescopes and all the tablets and all the laptops. It's pretty much a dedicated space network that allows me to move data around. If you connect it in station more to the space network, then you are able to access the SD card on the C star uh, without needing a cable. Uh, this is a laptop connected to the same network, and the uh, double slash, double backslash C star uh, will take you uh, directly to the SD card. And uh, this is where you can look at uh, all the files that are there. Yep, this is what I have done so far in the past two weeks. Uh, quite a few targets that I have attempted. And uh, here you will see uh, both the big files, the fits, and the JPEG uh, thumbnails. And you can just grab them and drop them uh, because C-Star here appears like a folder, on uh, like a network folder or a network drive, if you will. One of the surprises that uh, C Star gave me was uh, looking for uh, uh, M15. Again, this was uh, connecting the C Star, initializing and uh, getting ready to get moving on it.
and there we go. You can search for objects and you click on gazing and out we go to M15. M15 was well positioned at 136 degrees and uh, as about 152 degrees altitude so that made for a very very good target the red box is where you want the telescope to go and then uh, the bluish box is what the telescope thinks it's pointing at and uh, it tries to come as close as it can and takes a picture tries to play solve it on that evening i had not learned yet the need to point the telescope north before you start your session i had started by pointing uh, the telescope uh, south inadvertently and uh, it rotated towards the wall of the house and uh, attempted to plate solve it shooting identifying and it failed repeatedly to identify uh, that would be a something that uh, I don't know if it's going to require a software change or an update but in my case uh, when I point the telescope north now and I ask it to go to Polaris if I find it doing a full 180 and looking for Polaris south I know that I need to rotate it by hand manually by 180 degrees and uh, tell it to take it from there uh, which is exactly what I found myself having to do with M15 And we waited, and we waited. That evening I decided to see how long it's going to take before it resolves it. Uh, so we went to start gazing to see what it is looking at. And uh, this is when I realized that it was staring at my office upstairs with the red light on. I only have a red light in my office to... Uh, to keep my eyes trained on the sky so I can look outside and not be uh, blinded by any big lights inside the room. So when I realized, I wondered what it was looking at and then looked out of my window. And sure enough, the sea star was staring back at me. It was looking at the window, at the wall, instead of looking at M15, which was 180 degrees off. So other than that, uh, a little hiccup and other than uh, the inability to control the gain and the exposure when looking at planets I, I happily give the C star an A minus it did extremely well in pretty much everything that I asked it to do I have had it for only two weeks and uh, extremely pleased with what it had done uh, these are some of the pictures that I took with it. That was M27. Uh, this was uh, uh, M33, the moon, M15 eventually. Uh, this was the Pleiades. This is the comet that I captured. And uh, finally, uh, this is uh, Andromeda.